everybody, welcome back to the garage. My name is Jason. Uh, I've got another Mohawk tip, little tech information for you today. Uh, the previous tip we talked about the difference between an all-wheel drive and a four-wheel drive front differential in these Chevy and GMC trucks and SUVs. Uh, so the second part of that system is the transfer case, right? Uh, the all-wheel drive transfer case has some significant differences uh, from the four-wheel drive transfer case. And I've got one of each here. I'm going to show you the difference between them. So, to the left here, we have our all-wheel drive transfer case. And this is out of a 2002 Yukon Denali. And on the right here, we have a four-wheel drive transfer case out of a regular Yukon. So the regular Yukon that this one came out of, it was a 2002 also, but it had the push button selection for two wheel high, four wheel high, four wheel low. Uh, and you can see right away there's some significant differences between the two transfer cases, right? Now they are both still called a transfer case. The all wheel drive transfer case here, you'll see, has a lot less going on externally. The only electrical connection on this transfer case is right here. It's the output speed sensor. The, the computer uh, uses that to uh, help monitor are the rear wheels spinning in proportion to the speed of the output shaft from the transfer case. It makes sure there's nothing going wrong, right? Now, if you look at the four wheel drive transfer case, it still has the same output shaft speed sensor here, but we've got an electrical connector that it uses to see what range the transfer case is in, two wheel drive, four wheel high, four wheel low, etc. And it's also got the electrical connector here that controls the stepper motor that actually shifts the transmission into the different ranges. We've also got a front output shaft speed sensor here uh, that lets the computer know when in four wheel drive is the transfer case doing what it's supposed to be doing. If for whatever reason you're in four wheel drive, it sees a difference in speed between the front output and the rear output. The computer knows that there's something wrong and it'll, it'll put a code in, in the PCM. Uh, the next thing to notice about these, or the, the thing that you can't see, is four-wheel drive transfer cases actually have a gear reduction in them. That's how you get four-wheel drive low. So in two-wheel drive high or four-wheel drive high, there is no gear reduction. The, the output shaft, front and rear, in four-wheel drive or just rear, in two-wheel drive, they turn the same speed as the input shaft. However, when you put it into low range, there's a planetary gear set in here that reduces the output shaft speed. Usually, uh, they can go anywhere from 2.5 to 2.9 gear reduction. Uh, the all-wheel drive transfer case does not have any gear reduction in it. This is, it, it's called a, a power dividing transfer case, but there is no gear reduction. So the output shaft and the input shaft are designed to spin the same speed as the, all the time. Uh, you don't have to do anything, you can't change anything. Now, this transfer case has what's called a viscous coupling inside of it. And that viscous coupling divides the drive power 60% to the rear and 40% to the front. Uh, now, as that viscous coupling wears or starts to deteriorate, uh, you can see the rear output and front output will spin at a different speed because that viscous coupling is allowing too much slip. Uh, but that's that's... It's not until they, they get worn out or abused a lot or just have a ton of mileage. If they're well maintained and taken care of, the, these things are very low maintenance. They last a long time. The, the, uh, the benefit of that, at least, is 
Like I said, they last a long time. They very rarely have failures unless they've been abused a lot or they haven't been taken care of. These four wheel drive transfer cases. Now the part that engages and disengages the reduction for low range, it basically has a shifter fork and it slides a collar to engage, either engage that gear reduction or just allow straight through power. And on the, on the two prongs of that shifter fork, there are little, uh, it's a plasticky material that insulates the metal shift fork from the metal hub so they don't grind into each other and wear out and put metal shavings inside your transfer case. The common issue with these is that plasticky material wears out and then that allows the, the shifter fork, either it doesn't move that collar far enough or it allows it to move too much and then you'll have trouble getting your four wheel drive engaged and disengaged. It'll let pieces rub against each other that shouldn't be rubbing against each other. Uh, I mean, if it gets bad enough, you'll have a, a complete transfer case failure, but you'll probably notice before then that it'll have trouble going in and out of four wheel drive. Uh, your four wheel drive indicator light may start to flash. That's, that's really usually a good indicator that something is starting to go wrong in that transfer case. And it's not too late to correct it yet, but you need to fix it soon. So, that's really the big differences between these things. Um, you know, like I said, the all wheel drive transfer case, there's no, there's no gear reduction. They bolt up the same. They have the same six bolt pattern on the front. The, if you get them from the transfer case anyway, from a half ton truck or a 1500, the, the shaft input shaft has the same number of splines. So, if you had a, a truck that you wanted to convert to all wheel drive rather than four wheel drive, it, it really would be a matter of getting yourself an all wheel drive transfer case and then either getting an all wheel drive front differential like we talked about in the previous video or just getting the retrofit kit for your four wheel drive front differential that just keeps it engaged all the time. Uh, if you were to try to use the all wheel drive transfer case, with your four wheel drive front differential uh, and it's not locked in. So you're, you're really just freewheeling that front drive shaft. That's one of the things that, like I said, it can wear out that viscous coupling in the all wheel drive transfer case. It, it'll, it'll wear it out super fast. And next thing you know, your all wheel drive transfer case is essentially garbage. Uh, most of the time on these things, a replacement viscous coupler is eight or $900. I test these before I pull them out of the vehicle uh, following the GM factory recommended test procedure to verify that they are working, that the viscous coupling is good like it's supposed to be. Uh, a good working transfer case, I all-wheel drive transfer case, I typically sell for about $500. Uh, like I said, it's very rare that it's it's worth the money to buy a replacement viscous coupling because they're they're just so expensive for these things. Um, that's really, that's really the big difference is looking from underneath, they look very similar, but like I said, you'll just see that, uh, the, the four wheel drive transfer case, especially the electric shift transfer case, it just has the stepper motor over here. That is actually what does the shifting. If you have a four wheel drive transfer case that is mechanically shifted by a lever on the floor. The rest of the case is pretty much the same, except instead of this stepper motor here, there'll be a little arm that's connected to your shift lever with a ball joint. And then when you pull the lever, it literally just twists that arm and puts the transfer case into whatever range you're selecting. So you, hopefully this is helpful, guys. Like I said, uh, a common thing that I see done is people want to convert. Let's say they have a street truck, you know, a, a 1500 Chevy and they want to go street racing with it or, the, or, or, or mo, ro, mo, rally racing or motocross or, or whatever it may be. Uh, and they want to have all wheel drive in that rather than four wheel drive. All wheel drive handling characteristics are a little bit, not necessarily more predictable, but they can, they're better for doing autocross type events where you're going to be doing a lot of turning left, right on a hard surface with good traction. 
uh, four wheel drive. There's not enough split and differential ability and they can start to get driveline wind up, which causes all kinds of handling issues and wear on components. And it's really not an ideal system. All wheel drive is a much better way to go for something where you're going to be in a, in, a, in a situation with really good traction and you're making a lot of hard turns left, right, things like that. So I see it fairly commonly that people want these transfer cases to to change whatever they're working on to all wheel drive. Theirs is worn out. It's been abused and not taken care of. I mean, I think transfer case is one of those things that unfortunately it frequently gets neglected and people never do the, get the maintenance done of the fluid being changed and things like that. So it's just something else that, you know, these things are important and, and they work. And if you take care of them, they last a long time. But if you don't, they don't. So hopefully this is helpful. Hopefully you learned a little bit. Uh, if you have more questions, leave them below. I'll get an answer for you as quickly as I can. And if not, you know, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks so much for watching. And if you want to get more, more tech tips or see how I'm doing other things on these trucks, uh, subscribe along and follow the channel. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. We'll see you again soon.